Benny, are you eating pudding? Yep. Wow. Chocolate yep. pudding. Chocolate pudding. All, all, all of that British talk with Zach on the Beaver Fam Focus, and now you're eating pudding like a real <laughs> limey bastard. <laughs> and I didn't have any meat. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know where we go from here. Did you guys, did you guys, or well, do you guys, jeez, I haven't even touched my beer yet. <laughs> do you guys remember the stunt in, I think it was Jackass, where they did the, the dirty diaper stunt? Where they, oh, God. They made, put I mean, I probably uh, saw it at some point. They'd put chocolate pudding in a diaper and, like, roll it up like it was used and throw it in a trash can and, like, have the, the old man Johnny Knoxville, like, dig out of the trash can, like, oh, I'm oh, so God. hungry. <laughs> I actually watched Jackass 4? I don't know what number it is. Jackass watched... Forever, the new one? Yeah, the new one, Forever. Forever. It's, it's, you didn't let it's me finish pretty it. good. It's pretty good. There's is a it? lot of penises in it. That's Dude. why I thought it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. <laughs> I forgot how many were in 2, because I watched 2 the other day. And it's... Dude... Well, the shit my, that they do is crazy. So my birthday this oh, yeah. year was on a Wednesday. It was when we did that color cast watch along when men's basketball played Cal, which started at like 10 p.m. Benny, dude, mute yourself when you get into snack mode. How did you know? <laughs> okay, what are you eating? That was so loud. Whatever you were. Yeah, you're, goldfish. Goldfish. Good choice. Yep. Yeah. This is like, er, all right, this is the 42nd episode of Belligerent Peeves. Welcome to the 42nd <laughs> episode of Belligerent Peeves. Benny still doesn't know how the mute button works or why it's there. <laughs> and will put his hand into like a giant thing of popcorn or goldfish or chocolate pudding, which you were just eating with your hands. No silverware. That makes a ton of noise. And you're like, what? You guys could hear that? Yeah, you have a nice microphone in front of your face, Benny. That it. <laughs> picks up sound that's what it does my chocolate pudding was not that loud no that was no. quiet that was very silent i will yeah. give you credit there Thanks. so yeah quiet well, food God. or put yourself on mute <laughs> <laughs> while you get like yeah it's be like we all love wings but we're not eating plates of wings going like why not i mean i would do that i would kind of want to do that can we do that we probably can okay i don't know how it like wings are a pretty squeaky food, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ben's on mute and making a real show of it. He's mad at me. I'm sorry, Benny. You but know also, how loud that would have been if I wasn't on mute. It would have been so loud. You shook that bag of goldfish pretty aggressively. I, <laughs> I wish our listeners could view that. But we are here, not. <laughs> not a podcast for not, your eyes. Not, not to listen to Ben eating goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's our ASMR spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, but we're, we're we're all about spinoffs lately. By the way, we're, we're here. Noticed. We have a lot of spinoffs. Uh, first, we should start by saying Happy April Fools to everyone. It is now <laughs> April fourth, Monday, April fourth. We're recording this uh, during the men's NCAA championship game. If you're a Kansas fan or a North Carolina fan, um. I can't really wish you cheers either either way because I just don't care what happens. Yeah, in this say, game. cool. I hope you have a fun <laughs> night. I hope everyone has a fun night all the time. If you're in New Orleans, give my favorite city a big old hug for me. I feel like something bananas is going to happen at the end of this game because Ooh. I don't know if you guys remember the last time we were recording, but there was something specific that was bananas that happened at the end of us recording that episode. Chris Rock that... getting slapped. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. I'm. <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. We're not I... talking about it. I'm just stating a point. It... That it happened. We, at we the recorded. Li we finished recording. And we were like signing off. And Ben said, hey, guys, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars tonight. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and we had a great conversation with Carter. Uh, the beer was flowing, and we were having a good time. We were—I would say, as the as the kids used to say before they were not kids anymore. But 
I'd say that we were on one. All of us were on yeah. one. And oh, then yeah. in the waning seconds, Benny drops the Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars tonight, which just isn't a sentence you think you'll hear in your life. Um, that is a so, fact. And none of us had seen it. We didn't see it live. We were busy recording the 41st episode of the Belligerent Peeves podcast. Uh, I, I think we had as many people tune into that episode as people who tuned into the Oscars. Uh, <laughs> the, the Academy is a little uh, you know, close to the vest with engagement numbers, but I think we're about equal. I would say so. I'd say so, too. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah, we, we keep very close eye on, on our numbers, so... It, whatever right. loose numbers they have, ours are better for sure. Um, it is a big night for, uh, for basketball. Uh, Kansas is just scored the first bucket of the second half. We're not going to do the live broadcasting thing, but it's forty to twenty-seven now in favor of North Carolina. And we just talked a bunch of men's basketball with our friend Zach Scores on the Beaver Fam Focus. So let's not talk men's basketball on this episode because it's just <laughs> going to be depressing. Um, there's a can lot I, of can, wait. You've you have delayed talking about men's basketball. No, I haven't. We've talked about it. But you every time like, do we have to talk about this? Can we just not talk about this? And that's okay. But can we maybe dive into what uh your personal reasoning is that you can't confront these demons of Beavers men's basketball? I'm all about confronting <laughs> demons with Beavers men's basketball. I'm more towards uh shedding light and spreading love. Uh using the platform that we do have to uplift positivity and teams that deserve this, this moment, such as Oregon state softball, true Oregon state gymnastics, Oregon Very state true. baseball yep. Uh, yep. until just recently when the season ended Oregon state women's basketball. It's mm -hmm. not that I want to, I'm afraid of whatever, but if you, if the three Don't of us be afraid, Terry. have a 70 minute <laughs> podcast episode, where 70? all we do is yell at each other about 70 to 90 minute podcast episode where we just yell at each other about why or why not Wayne Tinkle should or shouldn't be fired. We're not fulfilling the mission that belligerent beefs set out to fulfill. Hey, I, I don't think we're arguing. I think we're all. On I the don't same. think we're arguing. I'm hey, just, uh, I'm saying, are we, we arguing about if we're arguing? This is a good argument. This, Let's is, this is what do we do. We, we do argue about whether or not we're arguing a lot. <laughs> it's like having a meeting about having a meeting. I <laughs> This meeting that could have been a meeting could have been an email that could have just been a DM. <laughs> so I want, I, I think this, this hasn't been in terms of uh, since we started this podcast almost one year ago. And we're, we should talk about what we, the plans we have for, uh, to commemorate one year of belligerent beeves being in the world. Um, we're very excited about it. Uh, but not the it hasn't been the winningest week since the last time we congregated as as a podcast. So I don't want to dwell on the negative. I can't offer any new insights on what can fix Oregon State men's basketball. So I just don't want to try. And I think not trying is a form the best of winning effort we could give <laughs> yeah. exactly in this in this instance exactly there are times to get back up and to give it your all whatever but right now we all know what's going to happen we know it's going to be a long off season and whatever and here we are leading with men's basketball you totally baited me into this i wanted to bullshit about the <laughs> nice nba job. for a little bit but anyways, that's why I'm not keen to talk men's basketball. But we fucking can. I just, can. Can we give love to some of the other teams first? Is that okay? Is that cool? Teams? Other oh, Oregon State. Other Oregon other, State. I thought you about other, other Oregon State <laughs> men's basketball teams. Other like, can we, like can last we, year's team. Can we just talk about last year's team again? That's what we, I, I, my idea was like. Let's just pretend that those games last year were happening live, and then we just oh, like recap that. them like they had never like. And just n not accept that that was 2021 and not 2022. <laughs> like, that would have been fun. That would have made March Madness way more fun. Yeah, we should have. Um, but anyway, big big weekend for basketball. The women's game last night in Minneapolis was dope. Uh, obviously, I wish that Ruick and uh, the Beavs had been there. But South Carolina is super fun to watch. Yeah, and I I lucked into some sweetheart free tickets right before the game started. So being there was was dope. NBA is in full swing swing. Benny, your uh your Blazers yeah. not gonna do it this year. 
Well, they might. The uh, they they may get the number one draft pick. It looks it could, more yeah. promising every day. Yeah, as as yeah. someone who uh, has been doing doing that dance of looking at the NBA lottery machine on ESPN, which usually starting on about January third of every year, <laughs> I, I, I wish you the best of luck. Um, but what is good for the Blazers this year is you are at least not as embarrassing as a team that the three of us all hate probably equally, the Los <laughs> Angeles Lakers. That's true. And I want to – okay, I, so I will talk. This doesn't technically count as men's basketball. But the a, one cool thing, cool Lakers adjacent thing right now, is the show Winning Time on HBO. Have you guys been watching Winning Time? Uh, no, but it looks really good. I did it's, spot a uh, a rogue logo. There is a rogue logo. There's a rogue logo. Uh, I'm not all the way caught up, but I've, I'm close, and I'm really enjoying it. John C. Riley as Dr. Jerry Buss is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so check out Waiting Time on HBO if you haven't yet. It's uh, it's like I was I when I was skeptical when I first found like they're gonna do like a drama dramatization of the Showtime Lakers with Magic and Kareem and just how that team was built. And I just didn't think it was going to work. And like five minutes into the first episode, I'm like, there's John C. Riley as Jerry Buss comparing basketball to sex. And it's like, okay, they, they got me. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> I've, heard, uh, I've but, heard the depiction of Jerry Buss is actually pretty accurate. What I've heard, though, is that a lot of the other characters uh, are misrepresented yeah. quite a bit. So oh, it, is, really? it is it is not even close in the vein well, of a documentary. Uh, no, it, well, it's not a documentary. I know, all. but some people are feeling like it's just like a rehashing of like historical events. Yeah, it's uh, it's historical fiction for sure. Yeah, yeah. But as and I believe it was pointed out to us uh, by our friend on Twitter, uh, PM at at oh it's PM in the third episode, third or fourth episode. There is a uh, there the camera is going in, in like a car and it's going by a neighborhood and there is an old school Benny flag, pretty clear clear as day just in a shot, inexplicable inexplicable. They weren't talking about you know uh, you know Ray Bloom or the nineteen eighty two Orange <laughs> Orange Express and Ralph Miller and those guys or visiting AC Green or somebody. Or AC Green or anything like that. Uh, it was just there. Just an Oregon State flag in LA. And uh, so that's, you know, up there with when there was a beaver flag Ooh. at the Tour de France. So, like. I like that. Well, didn't Leonardo DiCaprio wear an OS hat one time? Yeah, that one time Leonardo DiCaprio wore an OS hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, did, so did Lupe Fiasco. But was it yeah. was Lupe Fiasco at where where was he when he wore that? Was that was, that was it Lupe was it Lupe Fiasco or was it um Wiz Khalifa? It might have been Wiz Khalifa. Probably I both. I think yeah, they're man. both big Oregon State fans and have bought into season tickets on the new West Side when it's completed for twenty twenty three. That's right. That's what I've heard. But I want to talk about the Lakers for a second. Just... Wait, before before we go into the Lakers, I I have to ask this question. Terry, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hijack this. but okay. It's okay. But do you think it's possible to trace back? Look, look, it was a good day. Has been analyzed and scrutinized yeah. down to the day that was a good day. Right, Ice Cube? JP, please play five seconds of It Was a Good Day by Ice Cube. And if you can <laughs> find the remix, do that one because I think it's a better beat. But that's just me. Maybe that's hot. <laughs> no, you got to go original, bro. Okay. That was also Darwin Barney's played appearance song at Oregon State. And I will stop interrupting you from this. Please. No, but so what I'm, I'm curious about is do we think we could pin down maybe like whose house that was represented? Oh. I may need to rewatch the episode like a thousand times, but this is my investigative journalism game at work. I highly, I highly doubt it was a non athlete because if you're in LA and it's, you know, the, the seventies, eighties, you're probably not waving a flag for Oregon state because your son or daughter went to school there. <laughs> like, true. True. You're probably doing Were it. Were people doing they're... that at that time? Uh, well, it's when in the you... show. I might, my, my like, point no, no, is, no, is I, like, I'm uh, yeah, but I'm like saying like, was it a thing to start because uh, like in that point in the show, that was five years before AC Green got drafted. Yeah. Okay. okay. So 
But, my point is... Yeah, we could figure it out. We could probably figure it out. Who do you think that flag was representing for? Whose family? Whose household? Mm. Come back next week, Terry. You'll come back next You're week. a reporter. Figure it out. <laughs> All right. I'll try to figure it out. Uh, PM, if you want to help me. Also, I know he uh, hit up... Uh, the, the the OG Brandon Sprague on Twitter about that too. So Brandon, if 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 you have any thoughts on who whose house that might be, I'd love to hear it. And we'll throw um, on the mystery music and solve. The we'll mystery. Throw, yes. yeah, we'll, we'll get another we'll get another mystery music. Yeah. Um, but speaking of the Lakers in the current season, the, the 2022 season, right now, mm. um, the mm-hmm. as as we all know, the the mm-hmm. there is now there is the regular season. And then there's the play in and the playoffs. So mm-hmm. 10 teams in each conference get a chance at the postseason now to determine mm-hmm. the eight teams that get a chance at the playoffs. Mm-hmm. LeBron James on the Lakers famously said that whoever came up with this idea should be fired because it meant mm-hmm. that that year the Lakers had to play an extra game, I believe, against your Warriors, JP. Yeah, maybe. And I was like, anyone being mad about seeing LeBron and Steph on the court in extra time should can fuck off because that was awesome yeah like, so no, fuck, I know off, fuck off lebron but yeah <laughs> i i and like I, th- I think we can be pragmatic about lebron but in this in that instance i say fuck off um <laughs> but the lakers the the 2021 22 lakers lebron james anthony davis russell westbrook mm. carmelo anthony mm-hmm. a lot lots of injuries and stuff too but they have been the biggest train wreck in recent and distant NBA history. And I was looking at standings today and saw that they, after losing to uh, the Pelicans and uh, the the Denver Nuggets, who Wolves fans wanted them to beat yesterday, they are in 11th. They're not even in the play-in. And the standings I was looking at had, uh, it wasn't, you know, the full team, like Phoenix Suns, Golden State Warriors, Memphis Grizzlies, like full, like, city and nickname listed it was the abbreviations and the abbreviations of our our teams are all you know fairly obvious like the golden state warriors are gsw mm-hmm. portland is p-o-r minnesota is m-a-m-i-n the lot times that we just shook our head and said man god damn it <laughs> it's, a, it's actually f-u-k um but <laughs> anyways for for also obvious reasons the, the lakers abbreviation is l-a-l and as i was looking at them down there in the 11th spot likely not even making the playoffs this year with LeBron and at least three other Hall of Famers on the roster and this team that the fucking talking heads and all the bandwagon Laker fans who show up everywhere in every stadium across the country in Laker gear just like crowned as the champions beforehand. I was thinking a more appropriate abbreviation for the Los Angeles Lakers instead of LAL would be L O L. Oh. 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 I like that. Because every time I watch that train wreck, I find myself laughing out loud. <laughs> Can uh, did you guys see your your text? Did you guys see your text? Yes. <laughs> they're, 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 they had a solution, bird in hand. Is that the phrase? Bird in hand. Oh, they did have a solution. They had and the solution. The solution. What was that solution, JP? That solution goes by the name of GP2. Two. Two. And there's only two. one two. There's he only would one have two. been huge for them. Did the, did the Lakers have him, though? Yeah. 2017, 2018. The, La- the, La- the Lakers had him. They, they, could, they, could have kept, they could have kept him. They could have kept him. And he could Why have not? been a contributing player. On uh, Yeah. But anyway, so my hot take is a lot of people are complaining about the Lakers being on national TV every night. I love that they're on national TV every night. I want as many eyes on this shit show as possible. <laughs> well, wait, sorry that you won't be joining us in the playoffs, Benny. It's it's yeah. a tough time for Portland professional sports. Yeah, not good. We, we won't talk about that more other than, you know, just. It sucks. Better, better days ahead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
Uh, but there's a real chance that uh, Minnesota and Golden State are matched up in the first round. So JP and I's friendship is coming to an end. It's over. So I'll be doing the podcast by myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Betty smoking into a microphone for an hour and a half. And, 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 looking, up, and looking up YouTube videos of how to edit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, we don't need to talk about that shit anymore, but the Jayhawks just cut it to three. It's 46-43, North Carolina with 13 minutes left in the national championship. Ah, North Carolina really already got their championship. They knocked Coach K out in the final four in this last game. I mean, that's better than the national championship. That's kind of awesome. It would have helped my brackets for Duke to have won, but I'm like kind of happy that Duke lost just because I've kind of always been – I've I've leaned North Carolina in that rivalry my whole life. So Me too. I think everybody has with the exception of a few if you actually weird people Duke. and people that went to Duke, yeah. So my kid won our family bracket by the way because he had Kansas in the finals and you know he had them losing to Gonzaga. So out of nine entries in my family, he won by like 200 points. Whoa. And none of us none of us put money on it this year. Normally, we put a little bit of cash on it. But we just never agreed to it. We're like, let's just do it quickly and you know see what happens. And he was kind of bummed because we put the same bracket in a bunch of different pools that actually did cost money. And he one of them, he finished fifth, and they paid top four. <laughs> oh, and another one, like he was a little further out, but like Welcome so, to the real world, Everett. <laughs> no, dude, I can't I can't break his heart like that. So earlier when the game kicked off, I was like I was like, Hey, well before this game gets going, you know, it's solidified, you you've won, here you go. And I only I don't carry cash ever. And I had but I had two twenties and I was like, whatever, I'll just give him this. Cause eventually it's just gonna go to his bank account and I'll probably take it out and pay for something that I would have normally paid for myself anyways. So I'm like you won, dude. Here you go. I gave him like the handshake, you know, money exchange. Father of the year type shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, he pulls him apart. He goes, two twenties. And he's, I can see him getting really quiet. And he's like counting in his head to try to figure out. He's like, I don't even know how much money this is. <laughs> I was like, it's 40, son. It's 40. <laughs> 20 was 20. It's 40. He has five, but like, come on, son. I'm gonna take that money back until you can count to forty. <laughs> He'll get. He there. was just. He was just too excited. <laughs> <laughs> I feel. But I'm actually. I took last in my family's uh, pool, so I'm slightly proud and embarrassed at the same time that I was the worst, but my son was the best. Dude, so I don't know you, what that means to me, but you know, good, good on us. You, you and me both, man. I had one team left in the elite eight. Mm-hmm. One team left. Was it St. Peter's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I honestly don't even remember who it was. I just remember looking at it and being like, wait, okay, so the Elite Eight doesn't matter because the team that I had in the Elite Eight, I had losing in the Elite Eight. Tough. Was Arizona in the Elite Eight? No, they lost in the Sweet 16. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I think I had all my lead eights out too. You're like the Oregon State men's basketball team of picking brackets in 2022. <laughs> See, I will talk about our men's basketball no. team on the pod, JP. Um, let's talk about bigger things like big screens. Ooh. Let's talk about big things like giant screens. Yes. The yeah. <laughs> Risa is getting an impossibly big scoreboard on the south end zone. And that's important, and it's going to enhance the game day atmosphere. But what's more important is the question that we posed on Twitter that we still haven't gotten an answer to, and that is, can we have the old one? Yeah. Can we just have, like, parts of it? <laughs> never never mind if we don't have a place to put it. We'll figure that part out later. We don't need <laughs> to figure that out now. That old one's going to go somewhere. Are you just going to, like, put it in a dump somewhere, be wasteful? That's not sustainable. That is nah. not what our university stands for. Yeah, no. we're we're like the best environmental sciences yes. campus on the fucking planet. Number one in forestry. Are you just going to throw it in the ocean, contributing to carbon <laughs> emissions and global warming, Oregon State? Or are you going to let an independent nonprofit podcast of three best <laughs> friends podcasting during the men's NCAA championship instead of being at parties with other friends have have a nice little carrot on top? Come on. 
come on. We'll find a use for it if they give it to us. The but football also, is in your court. Yes, it is. Oregon this is the only football we're going to talk on this episode, too, because we've got so much else to get to, but the renderings look dope. Let's have... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I want to say dope. The renderings look... The renderings in... in they look like know. renderings. Yeah, because, like, have you noticed they look kind of slightly angled poorly? Like, there's, like, the left side is, like, like a little bit angled off to the top corner. Uh, it's a bad yeah. rendering. I could make that better in like a half. The a graphic second. design intern was hung over that day, JP. <laughs> <laughs> give, give, give the athletic administration more credit. Sorry, no. SIDs who are listening and judging our every move. JP did not mean that. That it was. That, you guys can record. hire me on contract. That's fine. But uh, Ooh, shooting shots. Yes, it does look slanted. See, I told you, and now you're never gonna unsee it. But. Um, yeah. What's cool? What is cool is it's full screen. Which when when the last when the last scoreboard came out, it was the biggest scoreboard in the Pac-10, and it was the biggest scoreboard by a lot. It became the smallest scoreboard in like three years span, though, because we were like so far early right. that the technology became cheaper and cheaper, like so fast. That, like every professional team, every single collegiate, like you know, Power Five conference team was redoing their scoreboards at the same couple years after that. Yeah. It was and the, a scoreboard and, wave. And, and, but like blowing out of the water because we were still reserving a lot of area for static ads. And so I'm really happy to see that they've removed that and they're going full digital ads because that's one great for the university because they could have so many more partners and that drives yep. a lot more revenue. So very, we, very smart decision. And we can be one of those partners. If, we if should have an ad. We should have an ad. Let's talk. I wonder how much they cost. I don't know, but we should just like uh, – Oh, we dude, we should do like a go Let's fund talk me. Let's talk to you. Let's we talk to you. Yes. We we're should here. do go fund me. We're here and we're not going away. <laughs> but also like, be because sick. but because of the help, renderings. Help us help you. How, hold on, because of the renderings and because when they announced it, I'm like this is not real, right? I mean though I knew there, oh, was, yeah, was, there was there was rumors that they were doing the new scoreboard, but I felt like this edition of the scoreboard was Leaning into the day that it was so announced, which was you're saying uh, it's the the, the, deli- the deligerent pickles of scoreboards. <laughs> it's the deligerent <laughs> pickles. Well, JP, you can just hashtag deal with it if that's deal the with case. it. <laughs> deal with it. We have a slopey corner of our new scoreboard. Deal with it. It's an accurate rendering. That's the new shit. Yeah, it like does, that, it doesn't even look crooked. It just looks like it's smaller on one side than the yeah, other. It is. I told so, you. Is this now going to be the largest scoreboard in the Pac-12 no, again? I don't think so. How long uh, before Oregon has a scoreboard that's one inch taller and one inch oh, wider again? God, Pro- that was. Will that come before or after the addition of their men's soccer program? I think you know what. Even oh, but even if it is, that the was largest, a good joke, and you just I, it I off. know, Fuck no, you. I would, I laughed, I laughed, I smiled, but like, <laughs> what I what I'm thinking is is like to claim things like that it becomes dated so fast. And so I feel like even if it was the biggest, who cares? Cause it's not going to be for long. Right. Yeah. Just make it cool. Just make it cool. And it's like, a, I mean, approximately the entire size of the end zone. That's yeah. so big. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be that big. I don't want to tell anyone to get off my lawn. I know we're getting older. I don't want to bring okay. Boomer energy into this. I, it, it doesn't need to be the size of the stadium. Like, my eyes can only take in so much screen. But there's a, bu- no, there's a bunch better. of other improvements. It's, uh, I agree. I agree. No, it I, can't go too big. But I like, know it's going to be better. Holy shit, this is a one-point game. Sorry, JP. Keep talking. N- no, so, like, it's uh, – but there's still going to be a lot of it carved out for ads on, on, on its regular appearance. And it will be great for the university at, at a whole. But – when it comes to like intros and replays to have that full spectrum video, it's going to be awesome. And just like, it's just going to enhance the experience visually, but it's not just that scoreboard. They're adding like hundreds of feet of LED, LED screens. Yep. And, and, and I don't really understand what That's they're a saying. game changer. So they did some LED a little bit, but this is going all the way around. It's going to be end to end, like uh, you know, goal line to goal line or end to end zone. But uh, there's they also talk a bit about LED displays in the north and south clubs. Yep. What does that mean? Does that mean like like the terrace is getting a scoreboard? 
It means the menu is not a piece of paper anymore. It's a screen that you Whoa. read and gives you a migraine. So I think this is what I this is what I took out of it with all the LED ribbon and the huge scoreboard is you can do some really cool pregame like team entry sort of stuff. Yes. Um, and like we've talked about this a couple of times and I don't know if we've talked about this on the pod before, but Oregon State's shift from being and I don't want to diminish what it was, but it was sort of hokey with like the band oh, played it. the the band produced 90% of the music that was played at the stadium. And when yes. we went this last year, it wasn't just it was the like, band doing it. It was sweet Caroline before the fourth quarter, which is right. What every 97 year old white person wants, which isn't <laughs> right. the demographic we should be trying to cater to. Right. So then when we went to this game last year, it was like, they had a DJ there and they were playing like fun pump up hype music. And if you add a giant screen and a bunch of led ribbons, like it's going to be a totally, totally different game day experience. I think. Hell yeah. And the, the dope, the dopest part of that was that, uh, like sort of cell phone light show thing that they did, uh, to party in the USA by Miley Cyrus, JP, yeah. please play five seconds of party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Yeah. And then after that, while I'm still talking, it wasn't just any DJ. It was our friend and uh, legendary Corvallis DJ, Chi Dooley. Uh, yeah. Shout out, Chi. We got to have him on the pod sometime. I, we, we talked about having Chi Dooley on the pod like when we, we started this shit. We're 42 yeah. episodes in. We got to get Chi Dooley on. And then yeah. he could just spin songs. He, just different five seconds of Chi Dooley's favorite songs for the entire episode. And it'll be the best episode ever. JP, I cut you <laughs> off. Please go ahead. No, I was gonna say that, like, adding on to what Benny was mentioning about, like, that, like, kind of getting the hype going and that uh, the pregame atmosphere, using the ribbons and the the big uh, new scoreboard. We have, um, you know, one of our followers, Pat Bieberman, wrote back to Sarah Elcano as she like talked about this announcement and just talked about how other stadiums are able to like turn off their uh stadium lights and then get them flashing either after a touchdown or uh at, during the intros at night night games. Um, it would be really cool. I know that that is like a whole, a whole different beast when it comes to preparing your stadium to be able to do that because that requires like instant on LED bulbs at every single light stand. And it's a big investment because, uh, for example, like the Giants in Oracle Park, they redid the lights about f four years ago. Uh, to switch from like the old incandescent bulbs to LED bulbs. And one, it's very expensive. Two, it is a whole different layout when it comes to light projection. And you have to pretty much remap the entire stadium in the light projection with that. So I don't know if the university is going to be able to do that anytime soon. I do agree, though. It'd be really cool if we could like flash lights at night games. Uh, after oh, yeah. touchdowns or or during the intro, so yeah, oh, Pat, yeah. you're on to something. Hopefully, that is in the future in the cards, but uh, it's that's going to be almost as big of an investment as like adding LED ribbons for, for sure. It's not already ready to do it. We have yeah. been talking about this for too long, and we need to get to our beers. Shit, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JP, I'm gonna let you choose. Would you like to go first, or would you like Ben to go first? I would like Ben to go first. Ben, okay, you're going first. So I am. It's a I don't, very nice sweater, by the way. You look fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a beer, and I'll tell you why I don't have a beer. I have been doing Peloton religiously lately, and I have not lost a single pound. That's not, granted. That, you're, granted, you're, you're trying. It's you're measuring muscle it belt. wrong. You're measuring it wrong. Yeah, don't worry about pounds. Dog. Look, I'm just you're saying. I'm trying to get healthy. That, and that's the whole wow. thing is I'm trying to get healthy. Uh, and uh, when I smoke in the evening, I eat the most garbage food. So I'm I'm uh, doing a month of no drinking, no smoking. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Is this an April Fool's joke? No. No April Fool's joke. Does this mean yeah, Ben bro. gets to still be on the pod, JP? He didn't tell us about this beforehand. I don't, I don't know. Appreciate we'll talk offline. Do we have to drink more? We'll yes. drink for him. Sure. I have a, well, I, I have a crowler tonight, so I. <laughs> okay, so we're good. We'll cover you, Benny. There we go. All right, so JP and I are covering Benny for episodes in April. JP, <laughs> you were excited about this. You teased this on the Beaver Fam Focus with Scott Scores. 
It's a Scott triple scores. IPA. It's a triple. Zach scores. Scott scores. Zach scores. Whatever. Scott starch. <laughs> Fuck it. We, we've already wasted too much time right now. We just have to keep going. Zach scores. Triple IPA. Your beer. You're wearing a chain. You look dope. Cool. Thanks, bro. What is it? Tonic Immobility. Triple IPA from Ooh. Old Possum Brewing in Santa Rosa, California. So I bought this last Ooh, week when I was possum. down in the Bay Area. And this was the last of the six pack. And I'm like, I'm taking this home. I'm going to drink it on the pod. Um, it's a, it's a hefty triple at 10.2% ABV. They actually say it's a quad IPA, even though it's what? listed as a triple. Yeah. So if you're not in the Discord, I think it was the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, uh, our friend of the pod, Scott, Scott Erlings, he shared a link to how uh, double and triple IPAs are classified um, and how they how they reach that classification. And so what I'm guessing is the uh, old Possum Brewing Company does not agree with the classification of a quadruple IPA, thus had to market this one specifically as a triple IPA, though it is very high in ABV and very high in incredible taste. Ooh. Well done, old possum brewing. What, what would you give it on, on yeah. untapped? Yeah. Yep. A four point two zero. So a four twenty. Yeah. Out of five. Nice. Nice. Love nice. It. Well, inspired by JP, I also have a double IPA tonight. I have a crowler from one of my favorite Minnesota breweries, Barrel Theory, in St. Paul, Minnesota, right by the St. Paul Saints ballpark in downtown St. Paul, where a massive beaver was just seen just roaming around yeah. downtown St. Paul recently. True story. Shout out the Lower Town Beaver, which is something <laughs> like you're just going to be – you could come to St. Paul 30 years from now and just be like – go up to a random stranger and be like, Remember the Lower Town Beaver? And they're like, oh, yeah, it walked uh, all these blocks along, and they finally got it back in the river. A giant beaver was just rolling through St. Paul, Minnesota. I understand what you're saying it sounds like, JP. It's not even close to the dirtiest things we've hinted at that, on the show. I'm not going to ask Wait, anyone no, about Lower Town mind, Beaver. You, you should ask people about Lower Town Lower Town. Beaver Lower Town. The, the, the streetwalker from Lower, lower Town. To the Lower Town Beaver to the Street Lower walker. Town. I'm not doing that. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> we have 1,069 followers. Nice. Um, nice. We're, nice. We're in our mid 30s. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, it literally walked. The Beaver walked right by Barrel Theory. This is a double IPA. It's a crowler that I have, and it is. Uh, it's absolutely delicious. This is a super cyan. Uh, with Galaxy, Citrus, Simcoe, mm -hmm. Cryo, and Mosaic Hops, 8.2%. Uh, Barrel Theory does a lot of great work, and it's also one of the most beautiful tap rooms physically. So if you're ever Ooh. in the Twin Cities, yeah, they hired like an incredible woodworker to do all of the woodwork in their Was it Scott? So it, it was not Scott. Then not he incredible. is an incredible woodworker. Yep. The, the Scott of St. Paul. The closest thing St. Paul has is Scott. So... <laughs> Not Thanks, quite. Scott. It would have been better with Scott, but it was the next best thing. So shout out Barrel Theory and this beer that um, I have now had, I guess, two and a half of is the measurement of Crowlers. So Nice. That's how many are in there. Cheers, so guys. Cheers to this, and cheers. I want to raise uh, this toast specifically to a good friend of the pod, one Marvin Beaverman. If you're listening to our show, you know who he is. Uh, for partnering with us to create what I think are the coolest shirts we have made. It's nothing we came up with. It's just Marvin's signature sign off Oregon state victory text uh, on a shirt, the same font on Twitter, the same emojis. It's a must have for, for any, for any Beaver fan or for anyone who, uh, who fucks with us and fucks with Marvin and just is on Oregon State social media? Um, it really is. It's it's my favorite thing that we've we've partnered with somebody on. And again, I just want to make sure that people know that we're not making money off of this shirt. We checked with Marvin first. We wanted to make sure he was cool with it, and of course he was because it's just about spreading love. And it's just you know that great saying, "Much mahalo, thank you." Arigato, mahalo plenty, go Beavs, OSU, our hats are off to you, beaver emoji, hand clap emoji, hang loose emoji. 
And it's for every sport, every win, big and small, every single victory that the Beaver fam has. So if if you have a uh, if you're excited about the softball team or the gym or Jade Carey going to nationals or anything else positive going on with uh, Oregon State right now, buy the shirt. If you have personal victories right now, shoot us a DM about your personal wins. But also, you know, hook up, hook yourself up with the shirt. Uh, we're all gonna have them at some point, and you know, just celebrate Marvin, who's just been a bastion of sunshine and joy for all of Oregon State fans through all of the bullshit. So that's yep. what this shirt represents. So I just belligerentbees.com slash merch. The shirts are there. And thank you, JP, for working with Marvin on this because yeah. they really are fantastic. They really are. I, I honestly genuinely think that there or don't think that there's any person out there that is as big of a Beaver fan as what Marvin is. Yeah. He's the one person that comes to mind when I yeah. when I think of a Beaver fan. And he's not just sports, right? He's a he's a fan of the entire experience of being an Oregon State student and fan, um, yep. and what that all entails. And that and that's what I think is really cool. And he's of course very active on social media and on Twitter. And I think he surpassed a couple of months ago like a million likes of his own likes that he's liked <laughs> tweets, which is like really really <laughs> impressive. Um, but we ran it by him. So first, this all started, if we want to trace this back really quick, it all started with uh, the Oregon State Out of Context Twitter account. Shout out to them. They they post some really awesome pictures as That's well. such a great Twitter account. It's it great is. Whoever's behind it, you're doing an incredible job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep it up. Keep it up. And they posted a screenshot, of course, of that signature a celebratory tweet from Marvin whenever one of our athletic programs wins an event. And... Uh, then our friend of the show, Scott Erling, commented and said, "Hey, I would love. Uh, I've asked, uh, I've asked the Blizzard Beefs to like put together a shirt with this on it. I think it'd be really cool." And I sat on it for a little bit and uh, put together a quick design, throw it over to to Marvin, asked if what his thoughts were. He loved it. He said, "Go with it. Let's do it." Um, we put it up on the site. Again, we don't make any money off of this stuff. It is sold pretty much at cost. There might be. Some wiggle room, depending upon if you're out of state and there is tax or higher shipping. But f- for the most part, we break even across all sales. And uh, we-, we wanted to put this up just to just to be fun and like, you know, show some love to Marvin and his dedication to Oregon State. But also it should be the official celebratory victory shirt and victory message for Oregon State. Like that should be like written in the handbook for freshmen. When they come in, <laughs> that this is what we this is what we say when when the beeves win. Agreed. I can't believe it took us this long to put it to try and put it on a shirt, and I can't believe for all the years he's been doing it beforehand, it wasn't put on a shirt. I'm wondering though. They, I'm wondering if he's gonna wear it as one of his shirts. Oh, we sent, we sent, what day of beaver him, pride? Yeah, what, what we day? yeah we we sent him you know his own comp shirt for for lending us the t- the the tweet and um. We're not an official Oregon State licensed, you know, apparel company, but, uh, but it's it's days of Beaver Pride. It's not days of officially licensed gear. But I feel like yeah. he has all officially licensed stuff. So I'm curious if and Marvin, if you're listening, oh, if you want to wear this, he can pair it with a nice hat from the Oregon State bookstore. There you I go. know he has. Yeah, yeah, he's got all the hats. He's got the whole the whole ensemble. It's amazing. I would love. I'd be he, so happy if he if he posted that. That'd be amazing. Same. Yeah. Hell yeah. We also have some old merch heading out of the store. Going, going, gone. Store. Last and chance. All just last chance. We have a last chance store. So, like, obviously, we, we whip up a bunch of this stuff really frequently. Uh, it's it's not sustainable when it comes to, like, having a browsable store. Like, we, we hear all the time, like, oh, you guys have cool merch. So this stuff's really cool. But, like, we're always going to continue to come up with there's new too, things. There's too much shit on it, especially with – an entire new line of deligerent pickles shit. <laughs> that is also limited. That's also limited time, but also live on the on the store right now. <laughs> yeah, there's still deligerent pickles stuff on the store. You can get that for limited time. Pickles hoodie dress. <laughs> you have. <laughs> it's days. It's days away from that being being gone. I love though on the left sleeve it says hashtag deal with it, which is pretty pretty savage uh <laughs> but, but we have we have our last chance store now so we're moving some of that the kind of like older merch uh into this or dated merch i guess is kind of the better way to put it into this last chance store and so for now we've got the uh 
men's soccer Pac-12 champions t-shirt with the I guess we'll never know on the back, which was the slogan, of course, as they like raised the trophy in front of the banner, which was really cool. Uh, we've got the uh, very popular Wrecking Reeser t-shirt with the uh, implosion of the old west side tumbling backwards. That one's only going on this because, you know, it's it's timely. It's gone. Um, and then also there's only one, too, with the Gary Payton head scratch. Also a very timely uh, occurrence in sports. It was really awesome when he was, you know, dominating the uh, the TV airwaves with, with the defensive plays and the dunks and with the head scratch. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's on its way out as well. So last chance. The one thing I want to point about last chance is – this these tees are on sale they're on sale which essentially means guys i'm gonna need you to pony up and and cover the cost of the diff there because we'll be selling at a loss but i i want to get them out Wait, so you so you want ben and i to cover up and yeah okay yeah we can do that okay for we for our listeners hell yeah yeah we, we've got that cool they're 10% go, go off crazy right listeners just not yeah. crazy. just not too crazy <laughs> buy a hundred shirts at, at sale i will gladly cover the cost there you go hell yeah amazing all right um dude the national championship is getting wild fyi damn it i need to put up on my ipad 65 it's right 61. behind you Can't i know it's still behind me i'm not gonna keep turning around my microphone's right here. <laughs> wait it's 65 61 kansas yeah oh yeah. we yeah. have to talk about oregon state softball we, we have, have to talk to. about Oregon State sports. We haven't yeah, gotten to any of it. <laughs> no, we have. We have. We were talking football and uh, and screens and about not wanting to talk about basketball. <laughs> All the things we said we wouldn't be. Uh, but anyways, Oregon State softball, y'all, killing it. it again. Yeah, so every so other sport we're bringing it. up has some bit of bad news. Oregon State softball, no, no. bad news. No bad news. Not only a four-game winning streak with a sweep, a sweep of the Cal Golden Bears and a win against St. Mary's before that, they haven't given up a run. Oh, shit. A single, they haven't given up a run in any of those fucking games. And they mercyed, they <laughs> mercyed oh, Cal. They mercyed Cal. Um, the pitching has been fantastic. Yep. Um, what, like... Sarah, Sarah Handigus, I hope Handigus, <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I truly hope I am because, like, so I so Sarah came out through a two hit complete game shutout in the first yep. game against Cal. Yep. Mariah Mazzone came out through a four hit shutout the next day, and Sarah came in and cleaned up just the the very last inning of that. So this is like. Like for people trying to contextualize Oregon State softball who maybe haven't watched the team or whatever, that's like Kevin Abel in 2018 College World Series shit. Yep. Because the next day, after pitching a complete game and then pitching the final inning, Sarah comes in again, uh, five hit complete game shutout, and the Beavs sweep Cal. And we talk a lot about. Uh, players like Frankie Hamoudi and Kiki Escobar and the offense of the softball team and uh, just what's going to, you know, ma what's making Laura Berg's team tick right now. But dude, this pitching and, and defense has, has been phenomenal to get us in conference sweep and include that in a four game winning streak where you don't give up a single run. Like they, we're, we're, we're at a point now where it's just like, Oh, we like thought this would be like a nice, like, Good team that could could be like a tournament team, fun sure. to watch team, yeah, fun to fun to watch team, uh, young young team still, uh, but now it's like, ooh, yep. they could they like this is it like like let's make some fucking noise, let's go to Oklahoma City, and let let's be excited about that. I know we're looking ahead and shit, but wonderful weekend for Oregon State softball, and and we have a series with Arizona coming up too who is uh one what are they one and one and eight in conference play so it, definitely a series to take advantage of and and continue to rise in the rankings what i love this is this is showing the depth of the team because if you think about the, the like this weekend right like sarah went in twice and it it's just kind of been a trade off of starting pitching for the last couple of games and like tarney tarney hasn't pitched in 2 weeks 
from today was her last outing uh, against Grand Canyon on the 21st. And this was like, you know, she had that like three inning outing and looked good. But but prior to that, she was getting knocked around a bit. And I don't know if they just like kind of set her down to like calm the nerves or if there's been an injury that they're just not really disclosing. Either way, um, it's just, it, it's exciting to see that the team is still stepping up and, and like dominating on the pitching front, which is like what we know this team is really built on. And uh, you, you talked about offense too, though, Terry, and like, you know, Kiki Escobar, also a uh, freshman of the week this week. And uh, oh, yeah. Sarah, Sarah, which I'm not going to even dare pronounce her last name because I know you already butchered it. Pitcher of the week. So Hand- Handigus. Hand- Handigus. Hand- Handigus, I think. Handigus. Did I do it good? I think so. Okay. Maybe. Well, we'll wait for Amy, but... Uh, <laughs> So she can correct it, it as until there's an actual pronunciation guide on the site. I'm gonna keep, <laughs> like we can watch the highlights and then we hear the announcers do it. And we assume the announcers are doing it correctly, but we also don't know that they're always doing it correctly because we don't know necessarily. And then also, how, how many highlights do we watch? Like we of every single team. Like it's it's easy for shit to get lost in the shuffle. So just send us the goddamn pronunciation and we'll get it right every time. It does we just help. Need to know. It does help as as we're talking about it and, you know, whatever. We're still talking about the same people regardless if we can pronunciate their name or not. And either way, they're both badasses. This team's full of of badasses. Fucking baller. Yeah. (laughs) You know who we're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. And and I hope that uh, this kind of next player up continues. Like it is – it's a trend with Oregon State athletics in general. And I think yeah. a lot of it lends to the family atmosphere that these programs provide for their players. That everyone's ready to step in and step up when called upon, and they're 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 willing and ready to kind of secede their their roles when they know they're not performing at the at their highest capabilities. And they're doing it for the betterment of the team. And uh, this weekend was a, a clear a testament to that for the softball team with the. Uh, mm-hmm. The, the, well, through last Thursday, that four-game winning streak and a hell of a lot of runs scored and an, absolutely none given up. For sure, too. And it's also not even just – like like the pitching has been fantastic, obviously, with um, between between Mariah and Sarah, um, especially, you know, with uh, not, not having Tarni the last couple of weeks. Uh, but, like, I've seen like, – like Grace Mesmer made an insane web gem like a couple of weeks ago that was basically – the the script of a sports center top 10 not many um eliana gottlieb has been huge at the plate since uh for the team since pac 12 play has started um we talk about kiki and frankie a lot all the time too but madison simon has also been really good lichi campbell's been really good uh des rivera savannah watley like this is a deep deep fucking team exactly um, Mar- mariah in addition to pitching has uh has been been huge at the plate uh, all, all season uh, for the squad. So, like, I, I don't know really what we were expecting uh, going into the season. Um, obviously, we aren't all Oregon State softball majors, uh, especially Oregon State softball history majors. But it's I, I think, you know, the, the team, I think, is ahead of schedule, and you have an Olympian like Laura Berg at the helm. And when you see a, str- a streak like this in midseason, even when the other teams you're playing, even if it's not like the top of the Pac-12 uh, cream of the crop or whatever, like it's teams who are in midseason form and are starting to figure themselves out. So you can't tell me that four straight shutouts against any competition isn't damn impressive. And we've talked about this team a couple times uh, in like the last like few weeks where we came over and they had like maybe not like the most dominant weekends that we became accustomed to at the beginning of the season. It's a team right now that's twenty nine and eight, yeah, and is been unstoppable on a neutral site, really good away, and still really good at home. And we've got good teams ahead of us on on the schedule, but damn, like. The, the last four games are as encouraging as they can be. And they were really in a bit after that ASU series. Like there's no, no doubt about it, but uh, the rebound has been very impressive. I would say like it, when, when you come back from a road being swept on the road to, you know, when you're your next, like what seven of your next eight. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a, that is 
sending a message like yeah you might you might get us once but like we're gonna come back and take it out on the rest of our opponents so um the team has bounced back their overall record of course still incredibly impressive and i don't really see them slowing down because like we said like right now they're still winning from depth and as they continue to get experience with the young players as they get people healthy um they're gonna be a force right yeah and it's not even like like last week we got sort of so in the in the weeds on a couple other things we didn't even get to it but winning the series against Stanford was pretty, pretty damn impressive. You know, it was winning games one Oh four one and then dropping one zero one, which was another gem of a pitching performance. Um, but Hamoudi was fantastic uh, in, in that, in that series and just cranked a no doubter, like almost, to, I don't know what direction that is beyond Kelly Field. Like, is that like fucking Albany? Is it, is it, is it Portland <laughs> where she almost hit that shot to? Um, it probably would have broken the door, the window in a few different dorm rooms um, if had it had it kept going. Um, and and you, Stanford's that that's a good program. That <laughs> it's not a shitty program out there. So uh, they they're on a tear right now, and this this is a team that's gonna have gonna gonna be a problem uh in the in the postseason picture yep definitely 100 percent. yep yeah and of course it's no surprise that it's an amy Sinicola team shocker shocker always involved amy um please don't yell at us, yell at us on twitter again for <laughs> for not mentioning oregon state softball we love oregon state softball um and and that same realm of things uh oregon state gymnastics Jade, Kare. Jade. Jade, Kare. So there's good news and there's bad news. And I think we should start with the good news first. Yeah, I agree. Jade Carey. Moving yep. on to nationals. Just Recognize hearing her name is good news. One of, yeah. And <laughs> it's it, it's pronounced Jade Carey. We uh, have, have confirmed now. Someone got a pronunciation <laughs> guy, Jade, didn't you? Jade like shade and Carey like Terry. Uh, Jade Carey, <laughs> one of the best gymnasts on the planet, is headed to nationals for the to the individual defend, yeah. In a- defend her uh, claim to the throne of the individual all around. And if uh, she's gonna win it, this is what's gonna happen. She's either gonna win it, or I'm gonna be yelling, "Show me the blemish!" at a bunch of fucking nerds who are claiming there's a blemish that's <laughs> not actually there <laughs> those are the two possibilities <laughs> um so yeah. i'm looking forward but to yeah. that so congrats jade yeah Huge honestly uh, what, what, was it a surprise no she's no. just been dominant all season long like i was just so that it's interesting you say that because i was just thinking that right like it's not a surprise we were all expecting it, it that has to be so much pressure on her. I mean, oh, she's used sure. to it because she was in the Olympics. The Olympics, but like, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Stakes. Like, for people to be like, "Oh yeah, like yeah, she's there. That's expected." Like, that's tough, man. And and she and she did it. So that's that's yep. huge props. Huge props yep. to Jade. You can tell she's got like a cool, cool, collected mind. Like when she's out there, like just performing at the highest level, right. she's so focused. And right. I don't think any of the outside noise or expectations weighs on her at all, to be honest. And I think that's probably a lot that uh, lends to um, her just being like a special athlete is being yeah. able to do that. Yep. 100%. Yeah. Unfortunately though, this does mean as a, as an individual contributor that she's uh, not being joined by her teammates. She's not being joined by her teammates as the team came up just short in the Seattle regional to advance. So the season for uh, Tanya Chaplin's group and the rest of, of the Jim Beam, Jim Beeves. Jim Beam, what are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the Jim Beam that I'm pouring down my throat right now. <laughs> it's because I've been drinking Jim Beam nonstop since the season ended. God damn it. Thanks for reminding me. Um, and the Jim Beeves has come to an end and that sucks so much to be proud of such a great year we had so much fun learning about collegiate gymnastics yeah and just following this team every week like i'm i'm so grateful uh just just for them and 
for how like generous like people like 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 Warren and Amy and just like everyone's been with just the different bits of knowledge that they've shared uh with us and just like helping us like co cover this sport not as embarrassingly as we would have without any help um it's just been so fun and i think we ended up with uh final like 14th ranking in the in the country uh overall uh bef before nationals happen so incredible incredible season for oregon state gymnastics yeah i'm looking forward Agreed. i'm already looking forward to next year this is a fun right. a fun program to follow All right and it was just dope to go and like jp we took your kids and everett was trying to balance on the curb walking back to the car doing yep. jade carry impressions like that yes. was just, like just fucking dope <laughs> like you know what's funny is yeah. so after that we bought on um on the switch there's like the mario and sonic olympic games game and one of the events you can play is gymnastics and we we nice. play that we play that one a lot a lot and then it's funny like i'll be like do you want to do like there's like rock climbing and there's soccer and rugby and all the time he's he's picking uh to do gymnastics so it's a lasting impression it was a great event it's a ton of fun to be at it's a great program to follow and root on and they are insane athletes insane <laughs> i don't really know if i've ever seen athletes live that can match that level of athleticism period yeah and that swag too like it's not just we how, gotta like, back it up there. somehow yeah. yeah yeah so hey it's uh 3.2 seconds left and unc has the ball because kansas just yeah, I inbounded I out of that. bounds Wh who what's the score 72 69 so you north carolina's gonna have one more shot oh um, so in the meantime, the Beavers in the meantime, have asked for a better start from the squad after collecting a 49.325 from Caitlin Garcia, Carly Ch Chavez, Lauren Lech, uh, and Sydney Gonzalez <laughs> by scoring the 9.85. Um, Maddie Dagan also had a terrific all around um, at the at the regional. And of course, Jade was uh, fantastic. Uh, Legend carry. Legend carry, legend carry. But we, of course, took third behind Utah and Stanford. We beat Illinois. That's good. I guess, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty, that's, it's fuck something. You. Fuck yeah. you, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, shout out to uh, Caitlin Yanish, too, who, good, you know, senior who we've followed all year and, you know, has been, just a, a gymnast who we thought has always, always been judged short of what she deserves. Um, I, th I think Caitlin really inspired the show me the blemish, blemish rally and cry because we saw Jay get a perfect 10 in person, JP. And then I think both of us agreed that we saw Caitlin do something not, not to like shit on Jade, but some of them were like, Oh my God, that was even more impressive. And they were like 9.95. Cause we yeah. hate fun. Mm. That's exactly, <laughs> that was the exact, that, that was the soundbite that came over the speakers at legendary Gil Cossingham. Uh, Caitlin, yeah, <laughs> just a dynamic, exciting athlete who should have gotten more tens this year is what I'm saying. And thank you for for your service and your effort to to Oregon State Athletics. Uh, should I turn the volume on for the last four point three seconds of the national championship game? No, no. Okay. Just tell. Just give us a play by play. I don't want to do the play by play. <laughs> Come on, just tell us what's going on. I, I will. Right. I will. Okay. So tall guy. Tall guy is about to inbound. Tall, tall guy is about. To, tall guy is about. To he inbound. passes it to another tall no, guy. Tall guy standing by a line on the sideline. Hey, wait. Here we go. And he he slaps the ball. He slaps the ball. He hands it in. A guy in a blue jersey. He pumps. He shoots. You're so late. It's been over. It's been over. It's been over, ladies and gentlemen. It was over before I began. Congratulations to the Kansas Jayhawks cool. on their uh, national championship. I'm sure Two Way Wigs is thrilled. I don't know if they're the best bird mascot, but they're certainly not the worst. My kid pretty much picked them because he liked that would their be in Eugene. Mascot. 
Are they birds? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a jet. Their logo is like a no, bird with really big shoes. bro. This a, Ducks uh, are birds. What? Shut up, Terry. They're not. Yes, they are. <laughs> we're changing. We're changing the ducks discourse are, around them. Ducks are they're birds. foul. Yeah, they're just foul. <laughs> Most birds are. <laughs> uh, congratulations to the Kansas Jayhawks on winning the national championship. That looks fun. Yeah, I'm sure winning national championships in basketball are fun. Yeah, yeah. Mm. we know that. But we know a few things about winning national championships in you know major sports. In sports, yeah. yeah. Speaking of, not a great look. They just had Caleb Love just go iso ball right there. Speaking of Caleb championships, Bob. Terry, we're done with college basketball. It's over. Okay, Move on. Uh, remember when I wasn't going to talk about college basketball? Speaking of, did you know that you can remove two letters from basketball and it can spell another sport? Guess which letters they are. Baseball. No, not that sport. <laughs> the letters. Oh my god. No, uh, K, K and, and T. There you go. Well, well smart. Done. <laughs> well done. We went to Oregon State for six years. I play Wordle. <laughs> I went for four and a half. Don't loot me into your debauchery. It was called an extended long <laughs> vacation fun time. I took a gap year <laughs> to uh, Lynn Benton Community College. <laughs> <laughs> baseball base baseball baseball if you build it they will come ray is there any crying in baseball jp uh a kid on my t-ball team on saturday started almost crying because he was tired so i almost pulled that quote out on him and said i just said tired what do you need like some coffee and he laughed so it was better he understood. I don't know how to answer this question because I saw crying in baseball, Terry, but I know what you're going for. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for going with the bit. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Oregon State baseball. We have, we have won a lot of uh, three national championships, to, uh, to be exact, in, in that yeah. sport. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, keep, keep, keep uh, trying to catch us, Kansas, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> since we were in college, I think you've won two national championships in basketball. No one cares about what happened when Wilt Chamberlain was there. So, <laughs> fuck that. Uh, but we lost the series this week to Stanford. Yeah. And I was spending more time catching up with the softball team. So, JP, I hope you have some thoughts here. I had so, I had the games on, especially like the winter. <laughs> and ben, ben, I yeah, have yeah. thoughts, too. I, Betty, you always have thoughts. Yeah. I won't. I won't go too deep. And you like, have an incredible sweater. I need to reiterate how dope Benny's sweater looks. It's very comfy too. Thank you, though. Cool. All right, JP, you talk, and then Benny talk. So the week games against Nevada, those were some hard fought games. They were very close game, one run games, um, n- nail biters. When I think most people were expecting a better outcome. A win to win, which was great. And I felt like, okay, yeah, with that midweek, we move on. We go to the, the weekend series. We go up against Stanford. We've got, you know, our our main rotation in. And it was uh, it was disappointing. I don't even know the best way to put it. But, like, I mean, Jerpy had, like, 17 Ks on Friday. And we still lost in 10 innings. We couldn't put one run on the board. That's one nothing. Uh, the win in 11 was really fun on Saturday's game. But again, like we we barely won that one. And then uh, Sunday, Sundays are just crushing us. And it is becoming, it isn't just a funny meme anymore. It is like legitimately concerning that we can't win. The, we can't close a series if we're up 2-0 in the series. And I, if we split the first two games, I'm very concerned about taking a series now on a Sunday. Um, the game was close. I think they put two on in the eighth or seventh. Stanford did to, to end up winning eight five. But uh, it's it's disappointing to waste a pitchy performance like we did for Jerpy on Friday. It's even more disappointing to see the trend of Sunday continue. And yep. that's that's my thoughts. Yep. Uh, I'll put a little bit of a positive spin on it, but I, I do agree with you that there is, um, it was not a good weekend. Uh, there's reason to be concerned. Um, but I will say it's our first series loss. Yeah. Is that right? It is our yep. first series loss. Yep. And Stanford was like top um, 10 to start it, the season. Yeah. And Stanford uh, was 
far and away picked to win the Pac-12 in the preseason polls. So they yeah. have talent for sure. The other thing I would say is um, in almost every other series, hitting and scoring runs has not been an issue. So I'm not concerned about our offense, but our pitching has been an issue and our pitching was insanely good this weekend. Um, so that's that's another positive. Um, until other, Until Sunday. Until uh, true, but I would still say Sunday is would be like in the top fifty percent of performances for pitching still, like, and that's probably a, a more of a knock on our pitching than uh, than Sunday. But um, the the last thing I'll say is the Pac twelve is fucking tough this year. If yeah, you take exactly. if if you take the top team in the standings and the bottom team in the standings away, so that would be Arizona at the top at nine and three, and Washington at the bottom at two and ten. You have UCLA, number two, with a conference record of six and three. You have California at number eleven with a conference record of five and seven. That's crazy, and and you have all these other teams mashed up in between. So I think um, that will bode well for the Beavers in postseason play. You you stack up against really tough competition week after week. Um, you're gonna have some stumbles along the way. Uh, I do agree with you, JP. Though that's uh, like you have to figure Sundays out. You, you have to figure that out. Um, but it was really nice to see some strong pitching performances uh, over the weekend. And I get like the weekday games, you're, you're not playing your best pitchers. Um, but to see us give up double digit runs against Nevada and then shut Stanford down for the most part was, was pretty nice. Uh, Bazana had a, an amazing um, game saving. Yeah. Catch the well. catch. Yeah. Yeah, that was sick. That yeah. leap over behind second to get that catch, and and the shit talking that he, he spewed yeah. at that Sanford dugout. Yep, was yep. sick. He is, he is like phenomenal. I like I said, Bazana. It's Australian for noise. <laughs> <laughs> that will be my Did slogan you, for the rest of the year. I know you're not drinking this month, but watching Bazana <laughs> do that, you I feel like you have to have a Foster's. Yeah, Australian yes. for noise and for noise beer. Chunder the <laughs> shit out of that one. Chunder. <laughs> I forgot about oh, that. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that, too. There's so that... many inside jokes we need to talk to the listeners about. Yeah, yeah it was great. Or maybe those guys were just doing like advanced scouting for Travis to see if he'd fit in in Oregon State. Yeah, and clearly in 2010. The yeah. <laughs> I know this kid. He's about eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he hits the ball off the tee like a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but you, you you mentioned those some things that could bode well in in postseason play, and I think obviously the stuff that you touched on is is very key. And as long as we're hosting, shout out to the Beaver Fam for showing up at Goss this weekend on Saturday. Yeah. Was it tenth? was the 10th largest crowd at Goss Stadium in the history of the stadium, which is like 115-plus years. Beaver fam, damn Lee. It's the It's the largest crowd in four years since like uh, the a regional or super regional against LSU I, in 2018. I was going to say, um, uh, middle of the season series against uh, six and what? A five and uh, a team that doesn't have a winning record in the Pac 12. That's it, doesn't incredible. travel well. It does, like, it's yeah. not like Stanford's fans travel well, so it's not like they were right. filling up, but they've added a ton nah. of capacity to gosh. They've added all the bleachers in the outfield, all of the stuff down the foul lines. So yeah. give them oh, all, of, all of the all of the shit that they promised would be ready by our sophomore year fifteen years ago is now ready. <laughs> oh my god, Terry, you just shout at people from your lawn all day long. Did, did I <laughs> shout? Did I shout? I'm merely pointing out that the column that I was asked to write by a senior editor of the Daily Barometer that led to me being yelled at by athletic administration was not my fault. <laughs> and I sat in a batting cage for three fucking years with no angle. Anyways, I'm happy hey, for the people who are at the game this weekend. <laughs> can I point out one or uh, two other things? Uh, yeah, one being yeah. that Oregon State is uh, one of two teams in the Pac-12 uh, that have reached 20 wins. So you have Arizona at 21. Oregon State has 20 wins on the season. Uh, and the other is uh, them motherfuckers from the South got swept this weekend. Uh, yeah. So we jumped them in the standings. So how's the weather uh, down there, Eugene? Who did – wait, who who did they get swept by? Uh, Cal? Was was it Cal? 
Probably Cal. That makes sense. No, okay. was it? Um, oh. Wait. I'll I'll tell you in a second. Uh, wait, or, ne- wait, Oregon has a baseball team? And well, also, did, need I remind you that Cal nearly folded their baseball team about three years ago because of uh, budgets. So they were on the, the brink of contraction, which, Terry, you understand well, being a twin fan. Well, that it, was in 2001. <laughs> And we told Bud Selig to go fuck himself and forced our way to stay. <laughs> the and Minnesota it, way. The minute, and then also the owner of the team uh, ripped off all of the d- citizens of the state to pay for a stadium. And that's why Bud Selig allowed us to stay. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, Speaking of stadiums, though, I'm going to the game tomorrow. I'll be at Ron Tonkin Field, which this will probably air after. Uh, yeah. <laughs> JP was at the game yesterday, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't he cheer loud enough, time. or he, he cheered the adequate amount. Either way, JP had something to do with the win or the loss or the tie or the whatever that <laughs> happened at Ron Tonkin Field. Uh, so direct, I'll see you there. <laughs> direct your excessive reaction to a midseason game against the Portland Pilots at JP. <laughs> That's at the Trill J on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> that game's tomorrow. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, nice. April fifth, dog. Nice, yeah, bro. nice. It's like a five thirty, five thirty-five. Are you first wait, pitch. Are you going with Funky Pomolina? I am. Yeah. Is nice. Kedonia going too? I feel like that's a game that Kedonia would be at. I don't know. I haven't asked him. I'll have to find out. Yeah. Uh, oh. Also, it was uh, it was Cal of sorts. It was University of Cal at uh, UC- uh, at LA. So it was oh, UCLA nice. yeah. that 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 swept Oregon. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot that this started as an Oregon troll bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. What does I don't it? give a shit. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. You still lost Oregon. We don't care. Actually, I do yeah. give a shit. Watching Oregon baseball lose just it just makes me happy. Yeah. You know. It's yeah. like an angel yeah. gets their wings every time it happens. No, it's like like so Oregon <laughs> what no or, what Oregon baseball it's so just to put this in like I think Pacific Northwest state school terms. You know like there's like you're at a party and there's a beer pong table and it's the type of party where you like want to play beer pong and not really socialize because it's like like clearly like beer pong's going to be the most fun activity here or whatever. Um but then, like, socializing gets cool, but you have kind of already identified that beer pong is what you want to do. So you just, like, kind of, like, wait to get on the beer pong table for a while, and then you don't get on the beer pong table. But then the party around you gets, like, a little bit cooler. And so you're just, like, talking shit. But then then you get called onto the beer pong table. And like, you're oh, like, shit, oh, up. no. Yeah, no, no. Now beer, beer pong is the shit. This is why I'm here. So you abandon the rest of the party just to be on the beer pong table, and then you're shit at beer pong. And then when someone's making fun of you, like in a just like a like a normal fun, like hey, you went one of like a hundred eight on your shots tonight and lost ten cups to two. Bye, get off the table, Felicia. And then you go like, well, I never cared about beer pong anyway. That's Oregon baseball. Uh, this is the so, weirdest. This is this is the weirdest segue to women's basketball we've ever had. I don't know if it was segue <laughs> to women's basketball, but anyway, yes, that was clunky. Um, Kennedy Brown's leaving. Greta Camp Schrader's leaving. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Best of luck, ladies. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. Best of luck. I'm not willing to be like. It sucks they're leaving. I'm gonna miss them in the program. Like, they're ha- yeah, exactly. But we have transfer portal exists so that athletes can take advantage of opportunities that are presented to them. I just really want to see Kennedy and Taylor together, and I feel I like did, we never yeah. got that shot because Kennedy yeah. was out most of last year. Taylor was out most of this year. Uh, but like what you know, our friend Tim U.S. said um, about uh, Sasha Goforth, who had a statement today about retiring from basketball earlier than what anyone expected. Like. There's always a million things going on with these uh, decisions, and it's hardly ever just like, oh, they didn't like the coach. So this hasn't been a problem. Yeah, like, well, like, and in our program, it's just, I'm just bummed. It's, yeah, and I'm bummed. I would love to see, I mean, Greta had a ton of potential, and, and Kennedy was obviously, you know, a big part of the program. I wouldn't be surprised, as Nick Dashell wrote in the Oregonian, to see Kennedy end up uh, 
at Iowa State where her younger sister Addie is recently committed to play so they can play together, which would be really cool. So I don't That's have cool. any problem with that. If you want to go play with family, by all means, go make that happen. Um, I think some of this has to do – there's so many sides to the transfer portal. It's it's hard to really distill down exactly why somebody would leave. And if I don't even think it's ever really one main factor. But uh, in the same article that Dashiell wrote about uh, Kennedy Brown leaving was that uh, – in in the post, you know, we've got a lot of players and we have a lot of depth and potentially and big recruits coming in too. Big recruits coming in. Uh, to me, a Gardner and uh, Reagan Beers, which ha- she Reagan's got the best last name in the history of last names because it's especially for our pod. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, Reagan, NIL deal Reagan, coming Reagan, your yeah. way, Reagan. Just needs to be a co-host like uh, in perpetuity for the. Last <laughs> But. This is the Reagan Beers beer segment of the belligerent bees. <laughs> oh, dude, the Reagan Beers segment. So yeah. many bees. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I could see that too, being like, you know what? Like, I, I had this opportunity, and there's people coming in who, you know, I'm forecasting might eat into my playing time, and this other school's offering me a chance to start, and whatever it is, there's so much that plays into it. I hate to see Beaver players leave any of our programs because we do invest a lot in them as as Beaver fans. And like, uh, I don't blame them for leaving, but it's just it's it's hard to detach. It's like a breakup. Yeah. It kind of feels well, that way, right? I it it seems like I don't know. I think our go to or like most people's go to when someone leaves the program is like, oh, there must be something wrong with the program. Um, that's just sort of where your head goes. But I think in, in the case of going to Iowa state to play with your sister, if that's ends up being what happens and that has nothing to do with Scott Ruick or the program or the players, like that's, it could be to- a totally personal decision that she's been planning on doing for a while. Uh, yep. and, and you can't falter for that. So, um, yep. yeah, it's different than, than some of the other transfers that we've seen, not necessarily at Oregon state, but where you see, you know, half of a basketball team transfer and you're like, okay, mm. there's something definitely going on with the program there. I don't are think that's s- the case with Oregon state. Are you segueing again, Benny? Cause now <laughs> we, we could talk about men's basketball because, uh, they also are seeing their, um, fair share of transfers yeah and it's not just it's not just transfers there's a lot of turnover as well within the program yeah um i think steven thompson has been relocated as a like uh, some non-coaching personnel role where he is uh i don't know like <laughs> an admin of sorts for the program oh, oh so i thought he was fired okay you know, he was he was he was fired reassigned. as assistant coach he reassigned as something else mm. uh Carrie, uh, Carrie Rupp's also been let go. Yeah. And, so, and Tinkle had been coaching with Rupp for, I mean, that, that's going back to Montana. Yeah. But he, he brought him in in 2014, I believe. So, um, he, yeah, he, he brought him in a while ago and it, he's been a mainstay since Tinkle's really been with the program. Yeah. That's an, I mean, you can read into that a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, I think Terry made a comment last week where so, someone has to take the fall for this. Someone has to take the fall for it, but I wonder right. if this is – what I've seen this as is something a little bit bigger than that, and it's um, it's a changing of the guard. Yeah. It is, uh, it is especially with the, with Thompson being reassigned. Uh-huh. This isn't really uh, – these are assistant coaches that aren't doing it anymore as much as it is these assistant coaches serve their purpose for my program. And now mm-hmm. it's time to move to the next level. And I think he wanted to give them both the opportunity to come to the next level with him. Mm-hmm. And, and last year it worked a little bit, but also Ethan was still on the team. And yeah. so I, the way I read into this is this, is that Tinkle, go, Tinkle took his loyalties that helped him build the program to where he got to to this point mm-hmm. and made a decision on who needs to stay for, you know, for just perception wise who needs to go and he may he said thompson's got to stay perception wise keep him in in the program not as a coach and, and rupp's got to go do you think that the thompson keeping thompson in the program and not letting him go completely has anything to do with ethan and stevie being no I mean, like 
I think it's just a gesture. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to speculate. Maybe this yeah. is what Stephen Thompson wanted, right? Like, maybe he's like, I kind of want to get out of coaching. I want to get into yeah. the administration side of things. And, like, you know, that's a fair – I I prefer right. that, to be honest. It seems yeah. less stressful. But, like, right. uh, maybe that was the case. I don't want to speculate too hard here. But, like, it's been covered on the Peyton years. They talk about it a lot. Like, Marlon Stewart is – a gem recruiter. He's a great coach. He's the guy who identified like Al Latiche. He's the, he has identified and brought in the guy from Germany uh, who's coming in next next year. Um, he's a diamond in the rough kind of recruiter who spots talent, and he was the only assistant retained. Mm. So what I'm what I got, what I was alluding to at the beginning was I think this, this is Tinkle being like this is a change of the guard. I'm the yeah. man at the helm. And I and now we built this program outside of needing like organic support because of family ties, mm-hmm. and we need to bring in guys that can coach and recruit. And I think he, I think we'll see a lot more of Marlin style coaches on the on the staff. Good, <sighs> yeah, I hope so. I, it's yeah. it's going to be really interesting, and like we can speculate all we want and we'll have plenty of time to do that between now and the start of the season but i think that next season is really going to be a testament and there'll there'll be a lot that we can learn from wayne tinkle as a coach of how do you get the culture back with this team and how do you build the chemistry because that we talked about it in um what do we call it the bff the bff uh (laughs) we talk about in the bff about where this is obviously an issue with team chemistry the talent was there the chemistry wasn't that's up to the coach to build back and if if that's going to be done by getting players out via the transfer portal and um demoting or reassigning coaches and letting other coaches go then hey that that's great for wayne that that's what we need to see i have no lack of faith in wayne me neither none that guy is a born leader yeah. And I think that that players that he can identify or his staff can identify as this person will fall in line with the way you want to lead a team. Yeah. Will make this program successful again. So I'm not worried about that. And I think that that was maybe a task that was too big for the assistants or some of the assistants this last season. And because the transfer portal is here to stay. We've talked about this. Yeah. It, it's going nowhere. And if Wayne and staff can't get guys to mesh or identify talent purely off of tape and blindly offer like them a position on on the team and, and give them you know a scholarship or, or some sort of uh, you know, financial uh, motivation to, to join the program, like you have to do that blindly because you can't coach yeah. and scout. Like yep. this is not how college basketball is built, and the transfer portal is made to reward players at the moment to like move where they find their best fit. And sometimes, I mean, it's like a resume. Like you can yeah. lie on a resume. You can lie right. and say I did this, this, and this, and it. You don't know that until you show up and you don't deliver, or it doesn't work out. It doesn't mesh culturally. And lying on a resume is how Weehage got his job at the OSU Foundation back in two thousand eight. No, I hired him, dude. He had the he had the lie. I already hired him. Yeah. I just put friends with JP. <laughs> yeah, Which, well, JP went to his higher up and said we're closer to acquaintances, to be honest. But then I don't want to associate him. with this dude. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't bucket me with him. <laughs> Real quick to tie it off. Uh, Lucas leaving that sucks. Hunt leaving that sucks. We both, we all wanted them to come back. We thought they both maybe come back with how the the Sean Davis news came out. Mm-hmm. Um, but they all left. It's like every ex girlfriend reminding you at once, like, no, no, we all left on purpose. Have, has anyone ever mm-hmm. left a breakup and been worse off from it? Ooh, good point. Please, let's let's not go there. T- except for you, Terry. Let's not go. Let's not go there. <laughs> You are better off from it, Terry. All of your breakups. <laughs> this is our podcast, not my therapy session, JP. But thank you. Um, no, I, I get your point. I I, th- I think we'll be better that, off. That, that that's valid, and I I do think that uh, things do need to get worse before they can get better, or at least need to be need to be necessary. You, longer you, term. you do need to tear things down to truly build things back up. That's like the fraternity just- way. Break you down to build you up. 
Terry yeah. spoken like a true fraternity president. We don't. That's not what I was thinking at all. I, I'm more thinking of like a frustrated Vikings fan, where I'm like, we clearly need to get rid of a few pieces of high priced talent, but Kirk also it's like, let's let's restructure and kick the can down the road so that we're fucked next year, and maybe we win nine games this year. So, um, I think. Thank you, Beaver Fam. <laughs> Thank you, Beaver Fam, for this very tuning in for this very enlightening episode. We told you it was filled with bummers. But just, there's this tough shit happening around. But, but we're also, proud. we're proud Beaver fans, nonetheless. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens next year. But I don't know. With college basketball, it's a it's over. A Move world on. of one year turnarounds. It is over. They haven't played one shining moment yet, which I'm very excited about. Always very excited about. My favorite part of the college basketball season is JP played five shiny. seconds of one shiny moment. Gave five seconds of one shiny <laughs> moment the Luther Vandross version. Dude, so I, I get <laughs> so much shit for this. One shiny moment last year was in the top five of my Spotify wrapped. Jesus. Because when we were making our run to the Elite Eight, I just oh. listened to it. Touche. I didn't listen to it much after March 2021, but I listened to it enough in March 2021 for it to be <laughs> in the top five songs of my Spotify for the whole year. <laughs> That's the type of fan I am. Um, anyway, lots to think about, lots to unpack, lots to look forward to in this episode of the Belligerent Beeves podcast. Uh, and even lots to get to. Uh, we are just about uh, a little over a month away from our first birthday as a podcast. Ooh. And we're going to be doing something for our first birthday, Beaver fam. There'll probably be some merch deals. We'll talk about that shit. There'll for sure be at least one Twitter spaces, and we'll, wa we'll want you to uh, tune in uh, for that. That's May 11th. May 11th was the day the first ever episode of Belligerent Beeves was broadcasted to the earth and to all of you. And we, we'd like to remind everyone it is a narrative podcast. So if you're a new listener, you should probably start at the first episode. But also if you're an old listener, we have old listeners doing the same thing. Exactly. And and figuring out how many times we mentioned Arby's in the past. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, great. Oh. We are the official crossover <laughs> podcast of Oregon State Sports, Andre Nicotina Music, and Arby's Beef and Cheddars. Uh, we threw darts at the three things we loved most in life. And we are the three individuals who loves those three things more, more than anyone else. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll have some stuff uh, for the, the first, the first birthday party, uh, digital in person, whatever it is. And we'll be here for the rest of the spring season as well. Congratulations again to the Kansas Jayhawks on winning the men's basketball national championship. Congratulations to the South Carolina Gamecocks who won the women's uh, NCAA basketball championship that I was lucky enough to be in person for last night. Jayhawks, Gamecocks, that's kind of poetic. Peacocks. Maybe. Peacocks. Peacocks. Cox. 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 <laughs> Huge rhyme scheme. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Belligerent Peeves podcast. We'll be, thank you again to Zach Scores, not Scott Scores or Scott Starch or Ja Rule or any of the names <laughs> 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 we laid out on Zachary Scores, Springfield, Oregon's own lifelong Beaver fan, uh, for the second episode of the Beaver Fam Focus, the BFF as it is known. Thank you to my esteemed co-host, J.P. Bertram, at the Trial J on Twitter, at J.P. Bertram on Instagram, and, of course, the dude wearing the dopest cardigan I have ever seen in my life, Benjamin <laughs> Lawrence Sebastian Weehage, a.k.a. Benny with the good quaff, still a good quaff. How you got that at the – you were fresh out the salon like four weeks ago, and it's still, it's still the same. Oh, my God. Thank I you. I, I don't know how you do it, but fuck, man, you look great. I appreciate you. At Benny L nineteen eighty six on all of your social media channels. Um, if you're in Seattle, hit up Benny, and if you're in Tacoma, definitely hit up Benny. <laughs> Yes. That's, the, that's the end of that. I'm Terry Horseman, and I'm tired, <laughs> and I have 
uh, been the other co-host of the night at Terry Horseman on Twitter, at Terrence Horseman on Instagram. Please follow all of us and follow at Belige Beeves on Twitter, at Belligerent Beeves on Instagram. Tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your grandma, give us five stars on Spotify, give us five stars and write a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps us grow the show a lot and keep tuning in. Get all of your friends to tune in and beyond all of that, Oh, here we go. One shine moment's happening right now, so I gotta go. But remember, 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 it's the ball is tipped, and there you are. And no matter what, you can't spell chop them without hope. Chop them. Chop them. One shining chop them. <laughs>